All righty. Mr. Cavanaugh is here. Uh, he can, it'd probably be best to have him explain which of the bricks are going in what places. Um, and uh, can he can also address any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. For the record, Councilman Schenck is now present. Tom, why don't you come on up here and fill us in? Well, but the first, Sean, come on up. Sean has been working hard on this and really is in charge of uh, documenting what we're trying to do here. The first item that you have is listed as Bourbon Street. That has been changed because we can't get the brick here in a timely fashion, nor are we pleased um, with the quality of the brick. So we're making a proposal to change it to mahogany, and mahogany is a combination of everything that you see here. Um, if you guys are familiar with um, City of Longwood, it's Longwood, right, where you guys are in? Your streets on City of Longwood? Very close to what they're using on their street, which is their city standard. Um, both bricks are made by Pine Hall. Um, this just comes out of a different manufacturing plant, a little closer to Florida. I think it's out of Georgia somewhere where the other one comes out of, mm -hmm. I don't know, North Carolina or Tennessee somewhere. So we're proposing to use this as the base on the street horizontal, and um, Sean and Dix Lathrop will pull a color out of here, a darker red, um, to probably work better on the underside of that. A darker red, which would be the vertical elements, the the planters, the curves, the, the crosswalks would be in a contrasting different color. But we just wanted to make sure that you were happy with this on the ground. Okay. Um, the other one here is what we're proposing to put on the apartments. You have actually seen this before, verbally approved it, but I just wanted to kind of show you a sample of it. The grout won't be as white. This looks too French country where we're going with more urban, so the brick will be spaced a little closer together. It'll be a little darker grout, but these two complement each other well. Yeah, it's also there. there's a building in downtown Warner Park that's using um, this brick. If you want to swing by and see it, it's... Um, it's right across the street from uh, St. Margaret Mary Church. I'll be on the south side of St. Margaret Mary. And it has the darker ground. Yeah, it has the darker ground. We're proposing to use that sitting ground. As a matter of fact, I think I have a couple pictures on my phone if you wanted to see it. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's good. Everybody happy? Yeah. yeah. Good. Happy, happy, good. happy. Happy campers. <laughs> All right. Go forth and build. Okay. We will change. We will change this to get the right nomenclature on it, submit it to staff, if you don't mind, um, just for the record so it's out there so there's no confusion. we got a little bit more homework to do, like I said, to get the vertical pieces and kind of what I call the accent pieces to match this, but we needed to get this first. Um, We're staying and, in the red thing. And, well, this is the red thing. You consider yeah, that yeah, the red thing? Even with the other, yes. yes. Even with the vertical. Right. We're mm -hmm. just going to pull yeah, out yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And, and the vertical is going to be solid because when you start talking about those specialty curves and the bull nose, they don't make them in a multi-dimensional color. So it's going to be a solid color. Like so brick brick. Yeah, it, it, might be, it, it might be just that. It might be just the underside of that, but it's a solid color where this will have your pattern, you know, on the street. And we'll have, obviously, there'll be a little concrete because we have to pour ribbon curves. Um, so you'll see concrete, you'll see this pattern. Um, and then anything going vertical, i.e. the brick pavers, the sitting benches, not the brick pavers, but the, the landscape uh, planters, that would be a solid color. There won't mm -hmm. be any mixing and matching of color. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Next. That's the easiest meeting you've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be a little harder. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Oh, very nice. Brian, do we keep those as evidence? Oh, no, that's... <laughs> I think we might want to let them take this one. Take okay. those with them. We'll let them take them. <coughs> Mr. Cobb, next item. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight, you get an op this is an opportunity for Council to receive an update on the designs for uh, Center Park, as well as your first opportunity to review concept plans for the Amphitheater Cultural Center. Uh, Dick Slathrop is here. Mr. Greg Bryla is here. He's going to take you on a walk through what we call the different rooms of the park. 
and he's going to tell you about the different aspects of the park. We're about 80% plans now, and tonight we're going to be asking for consensus to move forward to go to our 100% construction documents. Uh, also, we, what's new with these plans is that we've now worked into the design the uh, restrooms, the concession stand, the boathouse, and they've also put in a, a uh, site plan for the amphitheater cultural center. Uh, as I said, this is your first opportunity to look at the uh, concepts for the amphitheater. Uh, Mr. George Powell is here tonight and he'll be presenting that for you as well. Uh, the very last exhibit of your packet was some cost estimates for the entire park. Uh, the total price right now is around $4,492,303. Um, I've been talking with Mr. Cavanaugh, and these are preliminary estimates. And one of the things that we've talked about in the past is that we may have to sit down one day and go through a prioritization of the different aspects of the park. One of the reasons why Mr. Briley, when he does, when he does his presentation, he's going to take you through different parts of the park so that we can, when it comes time for us to do that priority, that we will be able to compartmentalize the different components. Uh, what Mr. Kavanaugh has asked is that we wait to do that so that give him an opportunity to go and get some hard costs. And once we have the hard costs for the park, then we can sit down and have a meaningful discussion about prioritization. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Bryla and let him take you on a walk through the park. All right, Brian, so just to be clear, we're going to wait till we have the hard costs to set the priorities. Yes, sir. So tonight yes, sir. we're just going to, uh, at the 80% plan stage, just either approve, continuing moving along, or tweak. Right. Okay. That is correct. Can I say one thing? In order to get the cost, I've got to finish the drawing. For 80% on the park drawings, we're probably 15% on the cultural center and the amphitheater. With a little bit of luck, we'll get blessing tonight to take that to 80% because I really can't get you the cost you need until the amphitheater, the amphitheater and the cultural center with the boathouse restaurant facilities until they're done. And I'm hoping to have that exercise done within max a six week period. Okay. Doug, you're going to be busy on vacation. See? <laughs> Everybody ready? I like that, Brian. Walk through the park. Um, good evening. My name is Greg Bryla, um, studio leader at, at Dix Lathrop. And what we're going to see tonight is we're going to go, uh, as you've already seen in your packet, I'm just going to walk you through um, each one of the spaces and how they've, um, since their inception in January, uh, through the natural progression into construction documents. And I mixed it up a little bit from the packet that you have, so it's not going to be just a big black and white presentation looking at technical drawings. So um, that should be a little bit more fun. This is uh, the master plan that you all saw in March at that progress, and we're just using this as kind of a, a, an orientation. The only key thing in this to note is the overlook and the cultural center at that time were not shown, and at your request, those have been added back in. And so we have this new updated key plan as well. Uh, so you can see all the elements are still there with the addition of the what we're calling the overlook uh, and the culture center. And we're going to refer back to this map as we uh, move through the park. And what I'm going to do, just for orientation, you can see the uh, overlook, which is at the almost top 12 o'clock on the screen, and then I'm going to move in a counterclockwise fashion and just go room by room. So it's uh, in, instead of jumping through the technical drawings, which um, although they're organized well, it's just easier, I think, to do this. So here we go. This is, this is our cover sheet. There we go. Um, the sheets as they're broken out in the set, we just talked about the brick pavers. Uh, so the key map, obviously, overlook being at the top. Uh, this is what was we showed back in March, um, with the exception of the overlook. But what this communicates is obviously the the center stair coming off the east-west street. Um, you can see a rendition of the Osprey Tower and then some of the architectural and, and vegetative uh, characteristics for the park. 
And what that looks like now in 80% document form is this. You can see the, um, and apologize, it's split on two pages. Um, the existing retaining, or the retaining wall that Tom's building, I guess, now, and then the walkway that goes up to the top of the amphitheater lawn, which is basically about eight feet above street level. Um, there, and it's at less than 5%, so there's no handrails required on that ramp, which is a nice thing, so you won't have skateboarders in that aspect of your park. And then here, the continuation to the south, you can see the overlook um, across the perimeter walkway, which is in the middle of the sheet, uh, over into the park itself. Uh, what is shown just west of the very tip of the uh, overlook, the small square, is the Osprey Tower itself. And here's, uh, again, details, the profile of the overlook uh, suggested or what we're looking at for construction methods, uh, framing plan. Uh, if you've never seen a detail of an Osprey Tower, this is what one looks like on the lower right. Uh, the cap rock walls are actually under a little bit of, um, we're looking at a couple different materials. Again, same issue of availability, but the character that you saw that we have in those character images is still um, its original design intent. Uh, very passive section of the park, just merely a uh, perimeter walkway on the west side. And then, so we moved down there now, we just passed it, so we are right now landing at the residential overlook, the dog park, the veterans tribute, and the performance stage. The updated sketch that you saw in March, this um, to the right of it, the green lawn area, is the performance lawn for the small, what's been affectionately dubbed the Jimmy Buffett stage. Uh, this also has incorporated the, the Veterans Tribute and again the City Fountain with the flanking uh, iconic towers. The oak trees that are on the left side of the image have uh, separate that from the dog park, so the dog park is off screen to the left. And what you saw in uh, March on the Jimmy Buffett stage, this has uh, been advanced as well. Uh, the Veterans Tribute. Now the, the, the Jimmy Buffett stage and all that has been reconfigured um, for all the site conditions that you're aware of, but just the plan of that. So what this sheet shows again in the upper left is the city, uh, the neighborhood plaza and the entrance to the dog park kind of combined there so we get some you know critical mass of planting and architecture. You see the dog park lawn um, kind of the, the trapezoidal shape. And then in the center of the sheet is the Veterans Tribute. And then the Jimmy Buffett stage on the right-hand side. And you can see how that, because of the muck issues on site, that's been brought inboard a little bit because structurally we can't place that in that never-ending muck hole. So that's really been the only tweak in that regard. And this, there's a couple of details here that pertain to those spaces, and there's a couple of details that uh, actually they all are. Um, what this has flagpole uh, details, some of the movable furniture that we're going to have under um, the end of the event lawn uh, towards the wet deck area. You can see the canopy shapes for that we're using for the dog park sitting area and the neighborhood plaza and then a detail of the dog park fence. Veterans tribute details. Uh, it starts, it's, uh, obviously there's lots of different sections cut through this thing. The design intent sketch uh, that you saw before in the upper right, and then these are just pieces and parts, um, for, not only for pricing, but as we move this towards construction documents. And obviously that's why this is at 80%, you know, a big elevation. This is where, and the image that you see in the upper right, where the names would be placed. So uh, elevation of that wall, paving detail, and a plan detail. Uh, the city fountain detail that happens uh, there next to the street uh, suggested uh, the tile mosaic uh, that we're using. 
And again, the uh, because of the muck issues, the, the stage foundation has had a couple of redesign elements to it because of the, the structural considerations for the wall uh, has changed the footings and the piers. So the the stage itself is going to look like that. We're, we're still, um, it's been advanced obviously since this point, but we weren't able to get that to you in the package uh, before the meeting. I have, very simply, there's the elevation of it without the roof um, at the very bottom of how that'll present itself to the water. So what you can see on the left-hand side, kind of that darker um, elevation section is the curvature that will have the oak tree next to it. You see the stage in the center, the ramp up to the side, and then on the right side of that elevation will be the veterans tribute area. Some miscellaneous typical details through the park, uh, paving and, and uh, some of the brick detailing around the, the palm trees, the cutouts that you just saw. And then as we move from the event lawn to the wet deck, family lawn, and the, what we're calling the junior senator plaza, it's that space between the playground and the, uh, and the family lawn. This is what you saw back in March, and yes, there was some discussion, so what we had, what we had done is we updated, um, put together a lot of information on this graphic to show um, the original sketch that was in the center that you saw in January, and we, we captured a, a new image of that icon from the, from the same view so that you can see it's still in the same spot. It's just taken on a different form, and this is what we're. This is the video tower. Uh, the wet deck area has been designed. You can see it in the center graphic at the bottom. It has the grid of pop jets and spray jets in it, uh, as depicted in the original sketch, which you requested, um, and then showing you know obviously the the technology of uh, the video screen is still under um, development. In addition to that, we also showed how we're using the these uh, light towers. Um, some of them are showing up on the residential product, and then we're using those in the park, so it all feels like a, a district. So the taller one that's shown here is the one that you saw at the city fountain at the front of the park. And then the other two smaller ones are used on the family lawn area and the playground. So instead of just using the same pattern on everything, the, um, much like on your city seal, we have the celery at the city fountain. We have a, 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 a citrus one uh, that's shown on the right-hand side, and the center one is depicting the osprey um, that happens towards the playground area. So in plan view, you see the event lawn where the future restaurant site will be on the lower left, the wet deck about in the middle, and then moving up the page, the family lawn, uh, and you see the squares kind of going around the outside shape of that. Those are those light columns that have the citrus on them. And then the, uh, the upper area that kind of juts out up into the lake, and I'll try this with the laser pointer if you can see it on the screen right here. This is the, uh, what we're calling the junior, junior Senator <coughs> Plaza. And again, if you remember from the original concept, we have the family lawn on one side, the playground on the other, so this plaza has the concessions in the restrooms so that it'll serve both sides. It's easy to get to um, from a parent watching. Uh, they can easily see um, you know, natural and natural surveillance around the concession area and the restrooms for everybody. And then with the junior senator, if you remember, is the clone of the senator, the state champion cypress tree, that we're suggesting to put in that plaza, which I can't get it to read uh, on the screen, um, in that area between the, the, the two small buildings. And, and of note, the, the concession... Well, the pointer might actually work better on that screen. Okay, thank you. This, can everybody see that? Okay, this is the what we're calling the concession coffee shop. This is the restroom building. Per your request, we now have six fixtures each, men's and women's. Progress. There you go. Yep. Uh, the footprint got a little bigger, but we made a couple of tweaks six, and changes. Six isn't 12, though. We need 12 in each. Yeah. <laughs> no, just 12 in the women. 
<laughs> okay. Is there any women in here? Don't you agree with me that the men's room always moves fast, but the women's? Right. Because we have. And, and, and again, knowing that we're not building these for Christmas and Easter, um, we originally had, I think, three in March. We bumped it to four, and now we have six. Okay. So, um, and, and the entrance to that is here. So from the playground, a mother or father can watch the entrance to those restrooms, just naturally surveilled. Um, we have the coffee shop here. So the junior senator plaza is here. This is going to be a crush shell, and the senator will sit here. Um, and you'll, and I'm going to show you in a minute uh, the elevations of the buildings that we're looking at together so you understand, again, spatially how all this is, is working. Um, this is the wet deck. I'll go over this again. This is the video tower in the, uh, the same spot that the chimney that you saw earlier. <coughs> The light columns of the citrus are here, here, and here with the steps, brick steps going around them. And then this will be the uh, artificial turf lawn that will have the uh, chess pieces in it. And then a trellis um, bordering the sidewalk uh, to give some spatial enclosure into the park. And then this is the entrance stairs to the playground area and an access way um, without steps. So it's sloped walkway, so the next, um, and then just the details. You saw the towers. This is what they look like in a construction drawing. And these are all intended to be laser-cut aluminum, so the patterns that you see here all laser-routed out, um, internally lit. The elevation of the video tower, and, and again, uh, we're still working in, in uh, design and the technology for this um, and again what it has on the sides will be the citrus laser cut aluminum and then the video panels uh, in the center that can be easily programmed either and, and we're looking and, and talking whether it's on site or can it be done remotely so that somebody in a city office can actually change the display on these is your technical sheet for the wet deck pop jets. And then, as I said, this is the, uh, the, the architecture that we have in the park, the small pieces, the coffee house, the restroom building, and the boat house. If you remember the original design concept, that the wetland that is between this park and a historic downtown is the wetland. And again, all I love seeing this on, on the seal, bless you, um, here. What we're doing is we're paying uh, an updated um, nod to your heritage. So the design concept for the elevation of these buildings is um, an inverted kind of uh, agricultural look to it. So the, the buildings are... Um, the building is shown, I would say, on the, I'm sorry, on the uh, left side of the page is the boathouse um, where when the chicken boats come, this is an office that can do point of sale, selling T-shirts, any merchandising for the chicken boats, which is going to be huge because um, everybody's going to want, I did the chicken boats, um, T-shirt and whatnot. Um, and, and the buildings are all very similar in character. Um, but it's not a period piece. It's not intended to be something that was built in 1920. Um, so it's paying homage to some of those forms, but at the same time, extremely durable materials. Uh, so we've got metal siding on, and stucco on these. We've got cast concrete bases for the columns, the, the piers, and steel for the brackets. Uh, the signing right now is just a placeholder, uh, something that we'll have to look at in more detail. And then on the left side, you were also suggesting two possible color schemes for you to look at. The, we, we, our preference is to leave the, the metal unfinished um, or a clear finish and then using color just to pop out those points where the park patrons will interact um, with the building. The only difference being the restroom building, um, which is on the lower right, here on this elevation, what we're calling the play elevation, this is what you'll be able to see from the playground area. 
And then the plaza elevation, the reason that we showed you this one, and there's a large stucco panel, which we're thinking this is probably going to extend all the way up to the eave, because the bathroom building got a little bigger, um, trying to pave all the way around the, the, the senator, um, if you will, is going to make that a lot smaller. So what we did is we took that crushed shell all the way to the face of this building, and then as a stucco backdrop, to that plaza space, the idea is that we're actually going to use this for a mural, um, something that is, uh, it's a piece of, it's going to be a piece of public artwork. Obviously, it's not a physical thing, but it'll be a painted, applied um, image. Uh, we don't know kind of what that is. There's a lot of different opinions on whether chickens are used or not, um, but certainly it could be something um, we would hope from, you know, the city's past paying homage to that. and. A stylized kind of graphic, not so much a uh, um, you know a work of art, a Renoir kind of thing, but just more of a, an old building graphic that you might have seen from way back when. Sort of like what they did up at the mall. The mall has historic pictures up and down the halls by the offices and by Sears, I think. And, and you could take one of those, and you know how uh, you could just. I'm not. Saying, I'm just. Asking if that's what you mean. What I, I'm not, I haven't seen those pictures. But if it, it were something of a, a, a lakefront scene with a, the steamship, something in the foreground, you then take what could be a photograph and make it more uh, positive, negative, just black and white. So there's not a lot of detail, but you see the image, and that gets applied, painted to that finish. Is the idea, and certainly the artwork would be submitted for everybody's approval by the time we get there. You may choose to have a public artist do it, but we would suggest it to keep it in that family so it's in character with the rest of the park, that it just be a very simple, um, bold image, because it will have a tree right. in front of it. So that's why we like kind of the wetland uh, lake character of that. It I, could, I, I was just curious of the process. I mean, way too early to worry about what the picture is. Yeah. So again, leaving the plaza. Uh, as it's depicted there, we're moving to the playground area. And this is actually, um, as you saw originally, this is what you saw in March. It's, it's it advanced quite a bit, and we've taken Drew's comments on board with the apparatus selection that it's part of the city's uh, standards, but we've added a little twist to it. And you to listen it. to Drew? I'm just curious. Knowing he's going to maintain and operate it, yes, sir, because right. uh, um, and, and, and what you'll see, though, is w in the, in the original concept sketch, which is, um, I, I cropped a little piece of it here <coughs> with, with the Sandhill Cranes, which when I left, uh, I was here at City Hall last week, and on my way back, of course, there were two Sandhill Cranes walking along the side of the road. Having that wetland character come across the amphitheater lawn, what, we've, what we showed you in March is how we're taking that character and infusing it into the, the play area so that it becomes um, a very much a stewardship move for kids because if you can teach kids um, the respect and the appreciation for that, it goes a long way towards um, um, having that preserved in, in, in the future. So this is what you saw in March. I apologize, the, image, the plan image on top is actually 180 degrees from the plan image on the bottom. Uh, which is what you had seen earlier. So, but the reason I'm showing you the one on top is this is what we're going, the pattern that we're going to do with the play surfacing. So there's going to be an, an area that looks, you know, more water oriented and some of it's going to be look more with the tan, more land oriented. What's happening on this piece is the boathouse has shifted slightly due to some drainage issues, and then this is the osprey trellis, which you saw before. And so when people are sitting underneath this, the shadow patterns coming through is much like, you know, again, tying all this sort of wetland character together. And this is what the playground looks like in construction drawings. The location of the boathouse, uh, here's the trellis, the play equipment's uh, lined out with uh, all the correct fall zones and whatnot. And then these, this is the promenade with the lake being on the left side. You see the small squares, those are the osprey light towers. 
And then as we move north from the playground area, you'll see the um, addition of the chicken boat dock and what we're calling kind of the boardwalk uh, start of that. So, and the periscope, if you remember that element, is located, is the, is the large black area at the end of that promenade. Everything that happens north of that, the big white spot, is the event lawn that leads to the cultural center. And then to the left side of the page is the boardwalk that undulates out over the lake um, through a small um, stormwater slash wetland area. The construction details for the uh, Osprey trellis, my brother's also a builder, so when I showed him the original concept image, he said, good luck getting somebody to lay that thing out. So. Um, obviously, we had to build a model of it, so you can see what this is for all the contractors in the room. Um, there's five modules, and they're all the same, so we're just repeating the layout of that module. So if they try to stick you with a higher fee for trying to build something like that, it's very methodical. Now, this is the fun part. This is the play playground equipment. Um, it's a little more higher end than some of the other play areas, and, and since... The, the bird swings, we heard you at the other meeting where somebody didn't like the idea of having these big swinging um, custom elements. What we're able to do, if you see in the top of the picture, we've, they had an off-the-shelf item, uh, which I'll show you in the, in the next slide because I want to come back to the, uh, oh, here's even a better one. This element at the bottom is a small featured sort of roof that they have over one of their stations. So seeing what they had off the shelf, we got them to actually add, talking to the manufacturer, they're add, adding this element of the Sand Hill Crane on top of their standard f feature. So when you're walking along in the, in the park, we still get that original uh, look that we want without um, voiding any warranties or anything like that, and we still get the character that we were originally after. So that was a really, you know, in, in my mind, was a, was a great bonus. Uh, all the play equipment is inclusive from two years old to 12 years old. And from the operations and maintenance side, if anything needs maintenance, since they're um, manufacturers that you already are using, it's a very easy uh, repair or replacement. So we have the promenade and the boardwalk area. Again, the original concept sketch. Uh, and you can see how maybe some of the characters change. There's the Sand Hill Cranes. Uh, the fabric trellises have been replaced with the Osprey trellis. And then the, you see the periscope in the center of the image. The event lawn to the culture center is to our right. Uh, we have been talking about the, uh, the wall. And you saw, I guess, in May when we were talking about removing the railing, creating a very wide edge that's been used in Sanford. There's an image there of West Palm Beach and the city of Kissimmee, which I think you may have seen in a separate email. The city of Kissimmee, just opening their lakefront park, has a very almost an identical detail to that. I know mostly because I, I did that one as well. Um, but same, de and, and I say same conditions, same amount of drop, same width to the cap, um, and, and it's great. So. Since we've moved from a port-in-place concrete wall to a segmental wall, we've added this concrete seat cap to it. Uh, and, and what this graphic is showing is how uh, we're terminating the end of that block so you're not looking at the cut end of a block. Uh, there's a post for the decorative railing that's being used in certain areas, just seeing how that transition works. And then if you'll notice closely how in the this uh, left side image, the indentation in the block, is instead of having skate stops that you see all around that are just bolted into the concrete, what we're actually doing is taking the seat and just moving it two inches. So it's poured in place concrete that has a built-in skate stop that doesn't look like a skate stop. The other thing that we've done, because we, we have an urban assault, um, he's also known as a skate he was, a skate, he was a skater in his previous life. Um, so we, we, we asked him what they look for, what he used to look for um, in, in urban elements to skate on and grind on and do all those sorts of things. So we picked his brain, went to the source, and designed in some details for this. 
Uh, you'll see here there's a, ban there's a strip of pavers in front of the seat wall that have uh, the dark gray is actually like a split face roadway paver. So to get a skateboard across that, and the, and the band is about two and a half to three feet wide, so they would have to jump literally their skateboard three feet to land on this wall, but they're not going anywhere because the, the steps in the seat are about 16 inches. So they're not going to be grinding on this wall and, and, and marring it up. He says, although they will, because that's the nature of a skater, if the skateboard goes over into the pond, you know, that's a chance they're willing to take, I guess. Um, and some sections, and what we've done was we've, uh, the lake in these images is towards the right. So you can see how we battered slope the top of the seat. So it's, um, back, so if anybody is sitting on it, there's just a natural inclination back towards the park. And then, um, and both of those show the, uh, the terminal cap and then the, uh, where the wall actually extends up two more block. So Tom has all these details and uh, we vetted them with the, uh, the contractor. So this is actually part of um, the infrastructure package that's going in now, but I wanted you to see these so you can see it all in context. Some not very exciting looking details, but they actually going to give a lot of life to it. Um, one of, and, and of note, why you see leaps on a uh, construction drawing is we're actually patterning some of the concrete. So again, that wetland character, uh, the trees. So when, you know, we have trees that people up north don't have or on certain coasts. So again, it's all very subtle points, adds a lot of texture and adds a lot of character to that. Miscellaneous details um, for the dog park, and we aggregate some of these all on certain sheets. Uh, the one that I wanted to show you here is the uh, the decorative railing that has the the park's motif that you've seen in tile. It's actually laser cut aluminum, and those again um, happen at the the bump outs uh, through the park. The other fun detail that we're still working on because we've never actually seen one is the periscope. Um, which is shown here. And, and really what it is, we've been talking to some um, eagle experts. You, you can look online and find eagle cams. So we're using the same technology. Um, so it'll be wireless. And then the, the really, the, the part that we're, that we're working on is what is the viewfinder? Um, you'll notice we have two. So there's one for smaller children and ADA accessible and one for adults. These will not you know, pivot and move, so there's no uh, danger of anybody getting injured or running into each other. Um, and, and so having that made to a public standard is what we're researching now. Um, and then I think you also have, because it's all server-based, that you'll have the uh, ability with the, wire, the cameras to be able to add additional cameras you know, around the park. Now, how we cycle through some of those, it could just be on an automatic rotation when you look through the viewfinder. Uh, but, and of course, the, to reinforce the original ideas, then we look through the periscope, you actually have a view, intimate view into the osprey nest. And if you've ever seen one online, I encourage you to go online and actually look up, you know, Southwest Florida Eagle Cam and, uh, you know, you, you watch the, them being born, you watch them feed, you know, it's just, and it's amazing how many hits that these things get. So uh, that's the periscope. Um, this is everybody's favorite image, I know, um, from from the from the March meeting. Um, what we've done here is what I'm showing you is the, the laser cut aluminum for the uh, decorative railing that I just showed you. This is the that was the CAD detail. This was the inspiration image, um, and the mosaic tile pattern down below it. We have. Um, advanced, of course, all uh, the railings for the boardwalks as we move into that area. Here you can see the framing plan for the boardwalk, uh, elevations of the, uh, of the railing, cross sections, and uh, so just for everybody's notice, the event lawn, when you're looking at this plan view, is over here to the right, and then when you look at this section on the left side of the page, the event lawn is here, and then we're dropping this one lens down, so this will have some storm water in it and have some wetland plantings in it so when you're walking along that boardwalk you're actually able to get next to 
more the wetland character, and visually this will help tie the wetland character that connects to, to the historic downtown over to the playground area. So it's doing multiple things, and then at the north end of it is where we connect to the culture center. Some other, just these are the miscellaneous uh, details, trash receptacles, bike racks, play equipment, drinking fountains, uh, things that you have standards for, the lighting. And the one thing of note here is in the streetscape infrastructure package, you already have lighting specified. So instead of adding additional poles, we've taken some of those existing poles and just added another fixture to that. So you, you know, we want the light, but we don't want to just start adding poles because it clutters up the park. Uh, and then what we're doing in um, other areas around the wet deck, instead of having a bunch of light poles around that, we're actually using this um, eyeball fixture on uh, two poles and having multiple fixtures on that pole. And if you've been to Disney, some of the resorts, um, the reason that you don't see a lot of lighting around the pool areas is because this is the lighting that they use. So they get a lot of work um, by using a minimum amount of poles. And of course, those only have to be on in force when the wet deck is actually open. So if you choose not to operate it, the lights don't have to be on and we have enough ambient lighting from other sources to make that work. And other uplight landscape lights uh, and such, and the festoon lighting that's in the park. This is what a finished schedule looks like. And then the culture center. So this is what we saw. Let me, um, just, let me just stop you for a yes. quick second before we get into this one, which is the biggest feature of the park, which I anticipate more questions on. Yes, Does sir. anybody have any other questions on what we've seen so far? Or is everybody good with it? Good, good, good. good. Councilman Britton, I'm sorry. Good for what I can see, but uh, are we going to get the package to look at? I don't, I don't think I've seen these charts before. This email to us. They were in your packet. I'm looking through here, but I don't, I don't recognize now, some of this. Greg, Greg customized this presentation for you tonight. Okay. But as far as the um, the drawings, the 80% drawings, yeah. those were provided to you as okay. part of your packet. But yes, we can. Can you put that out on the share site for a Yeah, yeah. just okay. something we can look sure. at. I don't. I'm, yeah. That screen's a little hard to see some of those details, but mm -hmm. from what what you're saying, it's it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, on the shared site right now, there's the 80% plans, but it doesn't have some of the, the, like the key map here that Greg put in for your presentation. But yes, we can take this as well and put it out on, on the shared point as well. All right, thank you. Councilman Shank, do you have anything? Well, you have that, you have oh, that, big, you have that big picture of that, don't you? The whole, the whole of it. Yeah, yeah it's yes. not broken down. Yes, I, I took the original yeah, key map for costing and just down. modified it for this I presentation. Thought I, saw, no, I thought I was looking at it. Yeah. Great. How big, is, how big is the wet deck? Just for just the wet deck is the same as 1,250 square feet, which is about because it's. Is that, Drew, that's for your reference. That's the exact same size as Live Oak Reserves. Right, Live Oak Reserves is 1,200 square feet. So we have something. Uh, and and they, I talked to Drew from there. Talked to him. They they have some learning things that they've learned from doing it. Um, how about the, the Jimmy Buffett stage? I don't know if we, we had set to increase, so I'm just wondering, do we make it a little bit larger? We did make it larger. I think we increased the depth to 14 feet, and it's also trapezoidal, so I think at the widest point in the park, it's 18 to 20. We've got it scaled, but yes, we did make that larger. I think originally we had it at 12 by 14, and. Yeah, so we, we increased the depth of it and the width. The only bathrooms besides the, um, the ones that are going to be up at the, uh, at the cultural center are the ones sitting they pointed out. Yes. In, in the, there are no in other the, bathrooms. Correct. Okay. I, I really think you have to make those a little bigger. but I, I think you should split them, but I, I, I think having... I think, even, I think one of the biggest things we said was more bathrooms, more bathrooms from day one. There's a lot of bathrooms. It's always a complaint. We don't have enough. But you have them. 
Well, let's see how it ties together. Up Whatever. To the, uh, I'm just console, so. looking at it, saying more bathrooms. Um, infrastructure. <clears throat> yeah. We have fiber poles, conduit. I, I, I haven't heard us talking about at any time sound system throughout the park, things like that. No, we, we have not addressed uh, the sound system. The light poles that are located through the park are certainly capable of having speaker systems, but we have not addressed the sound system yet. There's enough conduit to handle. Well, can I address that? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think that that needs to be addressed at staff level and, and figured out, but I do have one four-inch extra condo in the ground. With nothing in that? No. I have no idea what to put it. And, and there's no fiber throughout right yet? No. To find fiber? Fiber optics. It's running through it for use for the facility. Well, Bright House will have a complete trunk line in there for any internet television data needs, but do, I, I don't know what you need for other fiber optics. Um, you know, I remember a conversation at one time, the chief wanted uh, a conduit in the ground to <coughs> provide some security cameras on um, light bulbs and stuff. On the post, mm -hmm. hence the orange conduit that I have in the ground right now. Like, you could run multiple wires through it. Um, but I have never had a discussion with anybody as it relates to sound system, amplification, you know, what you guys want to see there. Okay. Done. I'm good. Brian. I remember us having a conversation, and I don't remember if it was ever but public, but it might have been between you and I about a sound system throughout. Because we thought, I, I thought we talked about like if there was something on the, you know, on stage, and if you wanted to run it throughout the whole park, that you would be able to do that. Yes, ma'am. That, that's what our intent to do is, is that we would be able to be able to have sound throughout the park, and. Um, it, it's something that we, we can sit down with Mr. Mr. Cavanaugh and begin those discussions on how we can fit, to fit all that into the park. But that was that was always the intent. But if you had a, if we had a concert going on, mm -hmm. uh, then you would it wouldn't matter where you were in the park, you'd still be able to hear. Right. Uh, if you were strolling on when there wasn't a concert there, if you were strolling through the park, then you would be able to hear music <coughs> of some sort. You know, we could pipe it through. Right. So that's the idea. Ground, whatever. Yeah, it's like the malls ground. have, and any yeah. other place that you're walking around has Disney, Disney, whatever. Yeah. Whether it's ground up on the light pole, whatever. I, I don't really care. I, I think that's been a point that we've talked about. I again, I, I, I have to agree. For I mean, a while, we, we need to include that as we're moving along. Now, I realize that's a bolt-on item that you know can be bolted on, and it sounds like. Uh, the the in ground infrastructure is going to be there to accept it, but right. it has to be part of the total plan. Yeah. Well, but the more you design it up front, having a again, I don't know, but I'm going to guess that where you're going to terminate it, where you're going to run it from, where the junctions are going to be, can relate to. There's going to be specific places whether you're going to terminate, junction it, or have a fiber run throughout, and then it really doesn't matter where you are. But that's something I know from the beginning we had. Wireless, you know. Talking fiber to, to do either wireless, but for those kind of things, whether it's sound, lighting, et cetera, that runs through there. Does the city have a spec or have any other speaker system in the public realm right now, that you, system that you guys use? Not really. Let's just Not cut to the yeah. chase. We don't. Okay. All right. So, Because it's certainly something that you're going to operate and maintain. You know, I think it's a nice idea to have the, the ground mounted, but 
this isn't a Disney, it's not a secure area, it's going to be open all the time. We might want to consider mounting them on poles so that they don't walk away in the middle of the night. Are, the, are there going to be uh, power outlets pre-installed to power yes. these things? At base of poles and such? I did see a nice feature at UCF last week. I was sitting on a bench and they had stubbed up uh, outlets underneath the benches so you could sit there and plug your laptop in or something if you need to. It's uh, all weather outlets. So something to think about. It's a good spot for them too. Is that included in this? We will make sure that that is included in their electrical distribution plan. And much easier to do while you're building it now than to add it later. Yes, oh, sir. Mm -hmm. Same with the sound. They said they maybe a bolt onto the light, but everything that powers it and forwards it and gets it there is now. Tom, uh, may I, can I? Mm -hmm. Tom, you said Bright House is going to run their, their trunk in there. And, you know, they have hot spots all over the place. Are they blank? Will they, maybe it's too early to ask, but will that? have a hot spot in there from Bright House? Yeah, at, at some point in time, the city has to contract for, with Bright House as to what their service is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about, you know, these video walls, this and that, and I'm not even 100% sure what you're going to need in the form of data. Right. But there's going to be a trunk line um, with a stub out that once you guys figure out what you need, it should be very easy for Bright House to get you those services. Yeah, I mean, because you're, you're going to feed all those apartments and townhomes and everything with yeah. cable. So I know, I know they, if you're on Bright House now, there's so many places around town that have hot spots. Right. So I'm sure they'll put one in there and that'll answer Councilman Shane's question. Someone's in there needs to get on their iPad for something. And they have Bright House or whether yeah. we make it available for right. people in there, I'm, I'm not sure. But it's a service that you probably have to pay for. As long as they have the trunk going in there. Yeah. They're putting fiber in there. It's, it's easy to do. That's good. So you ain't got to figure out the sound. And I'm with Councilman Brooke. you got to put those in we got to have the sound, big, whatever speaker, it's got to be up on the pole, you know, because they'll steal that money. As soon as they're in front of those rock speakers, so they'll be gone, you know. All right, so to recap what I heard, we're going to just address or readdress restroom facilities, outlets, as Councilman Britton brought up, sound, as all of us have brought up, and the stub out point or the terminus point for everything as Councilman Schenck brought up in, in reference to the sound, the video, wireless, start talking to Bright House now. All right. um, you know, and and we'll need staff out. recommendations on what you, That's what, what yeah, criteria you need. In reference to the bathrooms, we're talking about upsizing them to how many? Well, we don't know. Uh, what, that, that's what does the code require? The code requires, originally required two fixtures for the wet deck. That was the only real code requirement. We provided three at that time. The city's request was we need more. We now have six. So I would think, just my opinion, but six is adequate for probably 95% of everything that's going to go on out there. And that other 5%, we would, we would still need to bring in porta potties I would think, if we right. had Plus, we're going to have, we didn't get up to the... Uh, uh, yes. Empty yet has a whole bunch of them too. There are restrooms in the building you're about to see as well that are accessible from outside. There's nothing worse than having a, a bunch of extra plumbing that isn't getting used because it's hard to maintain that stuff. You know, it becomes a odor problem if you if you don't have enough people flushing those toilets. <coughs> All right, let's um, move on then. If, unless anybody has anything else on the south half. Well, to be clear, are we leaving the restrooms like they are? Do we need Let, to look Let's see at what you have in the cultural center okay. first. We'll Great. leave them for now. This is what you saw back in, in March um, using our concept plan. The image on the right is the key one where we took the original um, design program for function space, offices and whatnot, and we laid out schematically how these could be arranged so that they relate to the site context of the park, the operation of the park. So even in this very early concept, we had a street side entry and drop off. We had uh, the main ex uh, function space. We had the service kitchen on one end. The green is the amphitheater stage towards the back. Uh, office restroom component shown here in the purple. And then there was a porch that related to the event lawn 
which uh, at the time was accommodating about a 60 by 100 foot tent. And what you'll see from that is the updated plan, and I apologize, and just for orientation, this plan is rotated 90 degrees clockwise, so north is to um, the right side of the sheet. You can see the lake in the blue. And then if you, and what we've done, you, there's the, the amphitheater lawn, the event lawn's gotten a little bit smaller because of the amount of uh, architectural program that, that's in there. Um, the white block is the, the building that you'll see. And we put on here the red arrows so you can see how many accesses there are from outside into the building. So there's three across the front. Um, there's one back towards the service area. There's the main back of the stage. We've uh, added uh, um, one towards the lakeside elevation. And then the one farthest left is the entrance to the restroom. And you're going to see this in much greater detail in, in just a moment. But the reason that we wanted to show you this is this is actually a three-sided um, front elevation, if you will. It has a lakeside that many people are going to see and probably is going to, I, I, would, um, I tend to call this the front porch, but we're calling this the, uh, the lakeside porch, the event porch, which is going to get a lot of um, heavy lifting with what happens on the event lawn so that you can use that for outdoor weddings, bands, uh, farmers, market, you know, setting up tents, et cetera. And then you have the street side entry, which has uh, in one concept has a very large porch across the front and certainly the, the large plaza. We removed, as you remember back in the original concepts, um, prior to January, there was a curb and gutter asphalt drive in front of this. We've removed that and added a more of a flush paving condition so that um, people are not anticip We don't want to encourage people to park there. And if it looks like a road with a curb and gutter and asphalt, people are more than likely going to park there. Um, so this is a um, flush condition where people can pull up, drop off, uh, you know, the bride in um, wedding gown and grandmother, etc. And this is really the ceremonial entrance, street side entrance to the building. Um, if you're walking along the park side, there's a large porch in back, a large set of grand steps coming up the back. Um, to be able to get into either the building or very easily into the, uh, the restroom facilities, which are located, again, on this side of the wing. And you'll see in more detail when George does his uh, part of the presentation, we also have the ramp and stairs to get up to the stage um, on this side. And then the loading dock is on this side, also with ramp um, and stairs down to the service area. And again, what it, uh, how it's incorporated now. And again, as Tom said, the, the building's about 15%. But um, to make this very efficient, because um, George and Steve have been working uh, in CAD, this building is, is very well integrated into the park infrastructure uh, right now. So with that, I will turn that over to the Powell Design Group. Uh, good evening. My name is George Powell with Powell Design Group. Um, uh, Mr. Kavanoff uh, retained our firm to provide the architectural support for the project, and we're uh, very happy to be part of the team and to be here to present what we've got so far. Um, this uh, is a, a detailed view of our floor plan, and if I could, I'll walk you through real quickly uh, the various spaces and explain to you what we've done. Um, in general, the green area shown is the outdoor space. Uh, it includes the, the amphitheater stage, some circulation behind the stage, the main front entry porch that Greg talked about, the event porch that faces the event lawn, 
And this is all tied together with the back porch that faces the lake. The yellow area is the support area, which on this side of the building is, is the uh, service kitchen or prep kitchen uh, with a restroom, janitor's closet and, and mechanical space, a, um, an office that has an outside entry, and then a second office or flex space for storage, office, whatever use you decide. Uh, in between the multipurpose room and the stage, we have located um, our storage, audio, electric, um, prop storage. Uh, these are all functions that will work both for the stage, uh, amphitheater stage, and the multipurpose room. And then on the uh, far side here, we have uh, men and women's restrooms, and I believe we have seven uh, women's and uh, four men's uh, uh, toilets and then three urinals for the men. So this, this space, uh, along with the uh, women's and men's green rooms that will support anything going on in the multipurpose room or as a dressing room or changing room uh, for the uh, amphitheater, uh, with, as you can see, access both from the multipurpose and from the exterior. These bathrooms can serve the uh, amphitheater lawn uh, during a concert or during a presentation where people can come around, uh, not, you know, stay away from the stage and get into the restrooms, and also serves uh, the other part of the park from the uh, event lawn and the, and the other southern portions. The multi-purpose theater or multi-purpose room then uh, also has a raised platform, small stage, so this can be used for you know a band, a trio, whatever, uh, for something going on in here, or a stage for a presentation or a lecture. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And then also has access uh, to the service area to bring uh, equipment in, or. If you say have the uh, have have a large performance going on out here where you have 20 or 30 people performing, the multi-purpose room can become the green room, and they they are then able to get on the stage from behind a backdrop. The uh, the one thing that we did in this building that that really wasn't on the original program but ended up working out fantastic, is we were able to get a large area of glass and doors facing the lake which was not really part of the original program, but really ties this building into the use of the lake and the promenade around the lake. Any questions? Is that porch covered? This porch? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the dash line you see around the perimeter is all roof line. Oh, I see. All the green, all the green is covered. Yes. I'll be ready for that rocking chair. <laughs> Me too. This, uh, we had a lot of discussion about uh, farmer's market. Cracker barrel, is that what you're thinking? <laughs> we had a lot of conversations First about farmer's time. market and expanding and, and even moving out into the road. And we've modified this front porch area, so then we've got three sets of doors out here that can really open up this, this room and tie into that. So this, this space becomes, in our opinion, about as flexible as it can possibly be to accommodate your your uh, amphitheater, your your lawn, your what what might go on in the streets for closing that down, and then being able to service the whole thing. Anything else? Other questions? Questions? No. Continue on. Sorry. Um, as far as the building elevations, uh, Greg has up here two uh, rendered color elevations, two different color schemes. Um, what we wanted to do conceptually, what we're looking at now is, and I'm going to probably really mess you up. We're looking at the front of the building, street side. So.
this, this lower elevation shows a single um, drop-off canopy that will stretch out and allow somebody to drop somebody off out of the weather. The upper elevation shows an alternate with the uh, three doors across the front that ties that, that, uh, that cantilevered overhang out all the way across the front and covers that front deck. Uh, the whole concept here is to, to accentuate the, the three elements of the building on the front elevation so you have your center portion. It would be a high, uh, uh, very similar actually to this room except with an exposed ceiling. Uh, with the, the front facing the road being the high point and sloping down to the, to the back over the stage. And then either end of the building are the, the more um, utilitarian functions of the bathrooms and the kitchen. And then you can see the, the uh, canopy for the, the uh, event lawn uh, porch on that end. What's the building made of? The majority of the building is going to be concrete and structural steel framing, metal bar joists. Uh, on the on the back side in the amphitheater, we're looking at a, a stylized uh, arch proscenium uh, joist that will be the main feature. The the top elevation uh, shows being back up the. Um, amphitheater lawn looking at the stage. So you see the arched uh, truss there that would be supported by two major columns. Um, the concept of this was, was along with the rest of the park to try to make it look organic as possible. So the columns are, are designed to look like tree limbs coming up and branching out and holding up the, the structure. And we've done that consistently all the way around the building. In that view, where's the event lawn area? Pardon me? That'd be to the... In that view, where is the event lawn? Which side in view? the top view, the event lawn would be to your right. In the bottom view, we're looking at, we're right. looking from the yeah. event lawn. Yeah, the Far bottom right. view, you're at the event lawn looking back at the, the event stage, event, okay. event porch. You. Okay, so what else you got for us? Let me get oriented. That's it. Now you need decisions. And one thing that I'll, that I'll mention that it's great working with George's group. It's been a very collaborative uh, effort. And, and what we did, um, we did two color schemes again, so you can see that. Uh, the, the high dollar materials are on the, the largest part of the building, which is in the center. The two service wings on either side, uh, were, you know, there's a, there's a lime uh, cast stone base, much similar to what we're doing in the park. Um, and in this scheme, anyway, there's a siding in the front, or another option is doing a, a brick shown on the bottom. But then on the sides, the reason that we showed the elevation, so you don't you understand it in context, it will have planting in front of it to tie it in. So the, even though in the bottom elevation, the, um, the service wings um, in a more economical uh, material, and right now it's considering that stucco, but then taking the expansion joints and giving it that wetland character by, by uh, juxtaposing them a little bit. And then when you put the plant material in front of that, that part of the building, you know, kind of visually recedes and it puts the emphasis on the center of it, which is the, uh, where the guests and the residents will interact with the building. Now, above the entranceway door, Yes. That is glass up top there? This is a clear story, and they're, they're glass square windows, and we just did a color band around the top of that. So you are still getting natural light into the building, which was uh, the city's request during the, some of those sessions. Which way is that building facing? The, both of these elevations are the same. It's, a, it's the street side. Which way is that elevation facing? Oh, I'm sorry, east. So sunrise. Yes, sir. So you won't have the sun glaring in there in the afternoon. You'll just have the natural light coming in. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you go back to the other one? Because I think you want a decision on 
isn't the first decision going to be three doors or two doors? I would. Run, run us through the decisions. That, yes, sir. The, the decisions for this, the options that you have to choose from, is there's a three-door configuration versus a two-door. This plan in front of you shows a three-door. The two doors, uh, the, these two columns remain in both options. What we did in the three-door option is to extend the porch all the way across the front for the flexibility that George talked about, and then um, instead of the, the two doors that, w that you could see in the elevation that happen between these columns have just been um, aggregated into one and then adding the two to either side. Since you made the rendering out of three doors, is that the preferred elevation? We think it gives you a lot of the flexibility that the city's requested. No, no, get, just get the microphone. I'll see hand off the door to group. Um, I can't get it. All right. You're actually seeing both options. The upper one shows the porch going all the way across. Right. The middle part does extend out far enough to create our overhang and our drop-off cover. The lower one, and this one here, you can see that it's just the two columns just identifying the entry. So it's a little less of a porch and more of a drop-off. I guess what, what I'm asking you to tell us is in your professional opinion, what is your preferred elevation? This is the preferred elevation, okay. which is the top one. Okay. Thank you. Is the covered porch out front, is it all the way covered? Yes. Is it all the way covered? Yes. With the center section, as you can see, the dashed line, right. you still get the drop-off coverage, but then the side wings are only covering the porch. It is covered. Okay, so it, it is covered. All the way out to the green. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure 100%. There's the line right there. Okay. Perfect. Right. But the bottom elevate, the bottom uh, drawing, it is not covered. Right. In case you wanted to have that option, which was originally in the program, the, the front porch wasn't in the program, but then as we worked through it, we thought it gave you a lot of flexibility, and then the, the suggestion came up, so it we're showing you both options. Let's let's start with the front porch. The front porch is 12 feet all the way across and about 16 to 8 feet in the center. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, if I could, uh, from a staff perspective, we, we prefer the three doors. Okay. Thank you, Brian. What's the cost yeah. difference between the two? We, we're, you, earlier, um, I, I think right before you came in, what Brian had asked us for, Keith, is They'll give us the cost once we give them the design guidelines. They're going to come back with hard cost for us in six weeks, was it, Tom? Yeah, I, mean, I need to finish the documents. They, all right, they need to finish the documents. They can't finish the documents until we give them the criteria. Councilman Shank, big porch, little porch? Big porch. Councilman? Big porch. Deputy Mayor? Big covered three doors. So we're Bigger making decisions on aesthetics Bigger. without concerning ourselves with cost right now, right? Correct. Okay. Mr. Brady, <laughs> one thing about it, when, when we're trying to look at big porch versus little porch, we were looking at functionality. By having that the street side porch with the way that the floor plan is here, we now create a better flow around both sides of the building, either lake front or on the street side. There's a better flow in the usefulness of the building by, than having it on the small one. Uh, we felt like there was going to be a better interaction between the building and the street. And that was one of the reasons why the staff uh, made the request that, that we preferred having more of the three doors in the porch there rather than let, making it more of a drop-off. We wanted to have more of an interaction with, with the public. And we felt that was the way to do it. If you think about the, uh, think about this, farmer's market, you know how we have the, Biscuits, I can't remember that. Right. Up on the up on the porch, right? So if they if they were up on the porch here and the farmers market wrapped around, they wrapped around this way, then this porch here is going to be a better service to the public. And then we can also do stuff on the inside. And so now you're accessing a better flow into the building than if you had something that was more of a vehicular orientation like with the with the other doors. So that's why we that's why we recommend going with the three doors. 
it opens up the building much more. That's fine. I'm just asking what what kind of an impact it is. I, I don't think it would be large. Okay. I one percent. I'm not sure. No. Okay. I think we all agree that more is better. More is better. <laughs> but, but I think your point is. Well, well, my point was really is there's a I don't know three quarter million dollar bogey somewhere we right. gotta we gotta well, go tackle. I don't um, disagree. If we don't tackle the little stuff, then then it's gonna be a big big problem. I, I don't disagree. I think that. I think from a financial standpoint, you have to look at it as a whole because we can't cut half a million dollars out of the building and make it functional. So I think at the end of the day, with all the numbers, I think the decision that the council has to make is to find a way to pay for the structure now or wait. I don't think there's going to be an option that says, okay, guys, we're 600 grand over budget. Take 600 grand out of that building because I can't do it. I think you're, what you said is, is interesting because I, I think it's, it's all about function. I think we're going to make it another banquet hall space. That at right now, sitting cost, again, they're both rough, cost more than our community center without the stage even. The, the cost of the building costs more than our community center in estimate. We're building another community center. That's, the, I'll say, the biggest overriding problem that I have is Two things is the amphitheater is an add-on. It's the stage is poorly designed, and I don't mean the design of it, the functionality of the design. It's not covered, etc. But we've creeped this to be a wedding banquet hall, and that's what it's become, versus what it started out as. And and I I, I just don't see that we need another wedding hall and another banquet facility to go with our other banquet facility that we're going to build. And we could look to redevelop this as an entity rather than make it a banquet facility that it's become. My two cents. Well, all right, to answer the question, I'm, I'm okay with the three door. Um, just, I'm just making the point, and I think yeah. Stephen's making the same point. Uh, yeah. for, for his own reasons, you know, I, I think for a farmer's market, open air event and you're right it could be a wedding venue but it could be a lot of other things too so this is this is going to be our our destination or community place versus a, a, a venue for for private affairs and, and other banquet type things that, that the community center is going to be so I'm okay with it I just I'm just concerned we're going to creep into uh, a corner and have have to make some tough choices or cut somewhere else. Well, and that's, that's why they need us to make these decisions so they can bring us back the real budget and then we can go through the list and see how we're going to phase in. But you know, to answer Councilman Shank's question, I mean, you know, this is always meant to be the icon in the park was this amphitheater. I don't disagree. It's not, though. I, I, I'm going to just, again, your opinion may be that it is. My opinion that it's not. No, that's fine. I, that, that it's become a, as we, as we keep saying, the wedding center, the limo drop-off, that it's becoming, it's being designed for a certain use. I think it's being designed for a community use. I think that... That's uh, what our community center is for. We're going to compete with ourselves, and we're going to build two community centers. And I, I don't know that... Again, that, that's... I, 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 I see your point. I hear your point, but I think the community, especially all of eastern Seminole County, is completely underserved with the space what? like this. The what side? Oh, the eastern side. Yeah, the eastern side. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there is no space like this. If we happen to have two of them and we capture the market, uh, that sorry, could be I... beneficial. Uh, there, there is no space. I mean, any, anytime anybody wants to do anything, you're going the other way. So, I, I mean, I hear you. I understand what you're saying, but I'll also just I'll go back to the community center and say I'd rather than expand on the community center, build that bigger, and make a bigger community center, and look at both dollars and say, what, what do I have to spend and where can I spend it and what can I do with it? That's all. All right. Brian, what next decision do you have this building? Is that um, Councilwoman? Go ahead. No, I'm good. Okay. Deputy Mayor, are you good with the building the way it is? 
Yes, I just think, I just want to just add, you know, I, I, I don't disagree with what Steve is saying, but we have to remember one thing. This plan was presented to voters, you know, 10 years ago, whatever, and, you know, whether we agree with it or not, there was so much talk back then about the amphitheater. Some of us didn't like it when it was conceptual, but this is the vision we showed the voters that they approved, and I think we have to build it. I also think that, you know, the other community center, this was where I envisioned it to always be, you know, and that one came, came on. We do have both of them, but I think certain people are going to want to be in this type of venue looking at Osprey Towers and all these different things. So if they want to, get, you know, if I was picking a wedding right now, that location or this location, I'm picking my new downtown. So I think I would like to see this all come back the way, the way it is, and then if we have to start making some decisions. But the biggest hook of it, I don't see how we, you know, whether we like it or not, this is what our voters voted for, and I'm not willing to overturn what they, they voted for, so let's make it as nice as possible, and we'll figure it out. You know, I, I'd rather cut out a dog park and have this, you know. Well, uh, those are the decisions we'll make. Right, these are the things that we have to do, but something like that um, to, have the, to have the jewel, so. Should we make the announcement now for Mr. Hankin? That that we procured Tom Jones to sing it. Absolutely, we're going to have last that. Week. We're, gonna yeah. have, we, we, we're working on that. This ain't going to just be small that. stuff. We're going to get some big stuff. I, I think from I, I'm going to I'm going to just hit John to Councilman Shank for a second here, and and I think I, I'm going to help you. Uh, well, not well, help. If you if you let me do a couple three things okay. first, I'll, I'll let you go. I, I, first of all, what happened to the tensile shade? I don't. That's been in every picture since 2007 is a fabric back. The amp this theater is not covered enough in any way to do anything except, as we were on the phone call last time, it was, and I feel this is generally how it is, is we're going to get the local band to perform there, and that's it. Um, the entrance is onto the stage. There's a 12-inch raised deck to get onto the stage. You can't roll out anything onto the stage. There's one entrance onto the stage to get there, and it's a 12-inch lift except to go around to a ramp and up onto the stage. So as a green room and a back room to come out onto the stage, it's very difficult. <laughs> Make the decks even. That becomes a problem. Why, why there, there's a problem that, for that. Why is that step there? The step's there to get... Uh, in the original program was to get the stage up about 30 to 36 inches above the amphitheater lawn, and that's what that achieves. If we were to raise the entire facility up, then right now we have a 12-inch grade separation in the front just so you have a yeah. traditional ceremonial steps. The, the well, then, then it just comes down a little bit lower to the, to the lawn. Well, there's a ramp. I know and there's a ramp. If you're, well, again, you have a difference. My, and I said this on a phone call. I may be overthinking Tom Jones may be a real dream, but we can aim for the concerts that we had. Um, what was think, the Blood I'm, Pressure I'm concert? I'm thinking Kiss. Kiss. The Blood Pressure concert, multiple acts, things like that, mm -hmm. coming in and out off of that stage. It, it's an amphitheater first. The other, to me, to me, it's an amphitheater first. That's what the people voted for. And second was the building and the green room behind it. It doesn't act very well as a green room and a way to get things in and on that stage. You need multiple points to get in on a stage. Any stage has usually huge areas around it to get on and off of to make it easy for those kind of acts. Do you consider me and gardens good? What's that? Do you consider me gardens? It's different things. I know I designed it. You're throwing it back at me because I, I saw the design and we built it. But I'm just saying I was there. It kind of looked like You this. designed the Mead Gardens thing? I was involved in the design, yeah. The, the orchestra that we belong to Why'd built it. Why you put it. that step there, then? What step there? At the garden. Councilor, yeah. It, it's a different function. It doesn't have a green room behind it. That's what I'm saying. I don't have a pony in the race. No, no, I know. The sails out back. But I probably can tell you, and Greg may attest to this, I'm probably opening my thing now. Oh, the sails are cheaper than what's designed. The what? The sails are cheaper. Oh, the, the fabric, you mean? Yeah. I, I'm, okay, I'm asking why. I don't care what. Again, I, I, I'm asking why. It's been a design from the beginning. 
in every picture except I think one out of every image that's been presented. Yes, sir. And, and to answer that one. question, it was part of the city's request as to it, when we were at did the meat gardens mm -hmm. tour, a lot of that discussion was does this provide enough rain protection if we've got a big right that one doesn't it's then, well okay again we're we're not doing apples to apples so the request was if we covered it it would give us much more flexibility with the equipment that's underneath that does, that's, does, why that's why we did that's why we did that doesn't the back doesn't touch the back of the building does it There's no but it still provides no, rain no, protection the, the sides in the back are, I, I know i saw it that comes in and there's a separation between the roof lines on the back. That's still covered. <laughs> yes. Yes. It does. This is all covered <laughs> okay. in between. I'm good. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll just give my opinion on I'm good. Well, well I just want to make it. And that's okay. When, I just want you to understand the decision is what, you're, what it is, but what is happening is you you'd see in the sketch you have the amphitheater roof and then what that does is it extends over right, the it top of the roof in the back, so it is rain protected. Right. But we all know that there's breezes and wind, and it's just going to blow over. So. You know, well, right. much more protection, though, than the tensile fabric, so when we were asked to provide more cover, that was the uh, option. Tensile fabrics come all the way. I can, we can look at the ones in here and the other ones that I've seen at concert halls that cover up entirely ground from the side, attached back to the building. Um, but are not. 100% rainproof. That's 50 or 45. If we're going to like talk percentages, the sides of that are wide open versus one that comes and wraps down to the ground almost. Well, we have not shown, I mean, I understand your point, I'm not arguing with you. We have not shown that ground, that complete 180 degree coverage in, in our uh, precedent imagery. Could, uh, could we retrofit it to add? Sails off the sides off later on? Off the sides later on. I imagine you could from the event lawn side. Remember, this is the lakeside elevation. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do that, you're basically blocking off that side of it. This side is probably not as big of a concern, but we still have to get equipment. I'm just saying for if a storm pops up, you pull a cord and you roll it down to provide you a little, little extra protection from the side. I'm, I'm not, sure not that, that it would be, be that way during a show or anything. I'm sure between these two columns that you could provide that vertical. You, you could have, yeah, like a, you know, a window blind type thing. But yeah, again, the Mead Gardens, when we were all there, that was um, directed as kind of the model that we were working with at the time. And then the request was to make it a little more weatherproof, go into a permanent roof. And as Tom said, going back to a fabric sale in that place actually makes it a less expensive structure. Listen, you got to remember something. You're in an outdoor environment anyway. You know, the next thing we're going to be talking about is how to kill all the mosquitoes when we're out there on the rug at night, too. I mean, yeah. it's an outdoor thing. Britain brings up a great point. The two sides can have something to come out. You get a big storm rolling, that comes in. My question is, to, uh, to, to clarify what, what Steve was saying, these ramps, to bring equipment in, um, are these ramps, can somebody wheel up big amplifiers and yes, speakers sir. and stuff? Yes, I'm not seeing it as a problem. Okay. I see them. Right. Semis can back up to this end of the building. Okay. And there is a 10-foot um, okay. wide ramp at 5% to, to be able to right get from the truck to dock to right onto right, the ramp. Right in. Okay. So, so okay. basically, as Tom was just saying, in this dock area, you, your truck can pull in there, you can come down these ramps, and you can load all your equipment on that stage. Yes, sir. All right, so except for the coverings, I'm not seeing what the problem is. I mean, I know some of us don't like it, you know, we didn't like it, but I mean, I think functionality, it's an outdoor amphitheater, it's not going to be dry all the time. But we got to make it as perfect, you got all this equipment up there, something temporary, maybe on the sides. And, and, and frankly, if something really bad and we got some... We, we kid around with Tom Jones, but if we got some major act here that had, you know, millions of dollars of equipment up there, you know, uh, want to come down the front, too, to close it off. I mean, how this is not rocket science, you know? I just don't want to kill the whole design this because of a couple of things, good. you know? Do you have but, uh, rigging, like some sort of uh, lighting rig set up? Let me let George address the technical aspects. In our, in our drawings, we're not actually showing the lighting rigs. Uh, in our experience, we found that those are brought by the individual performer, but we'll have, but we'll have the ability 
to, to rig them up there. Yes, that percentile truss will be substantial enough to put hang speakers and, and lighting rigs and whatever you want to hang. Are we going to have a some sort of basic lighting and sound system for when the local groups come in, Drew? That's what we're looking at, yes. Not looking at. Is that what we're going to have? Yes. Thank you. That will be an afterthought. That, that's not inclusive in this. That's something. Right, because you'll yeah. have the smaller yeah. groups come in who aren't going to bring their own lighting, that we're right. going to have to provide some lighting and some sort of sound like we do at Lake Yola. For our own advanced stuff, we will have, or we will be able to provide that. But just so you'll know, my contract with you gentlemen is we'll provide all the pathways. That's not okay. Because we didn't know, so if you guys wanted to go buy a couple lights and a couple of speakers, we'll provide the pathway, pathways of the connectivity to make that all happen. Everyone's okay with the design? I'd like to see a little more stone as you're kind of, you know, a little bit more natural stone and brick maybe to kind of tie it in a little bit more, but that's just. Would you prefer stone or brick? You don't do stone here. I, I wanted to blend, I, I, I like the way you were blending the bottom on that one color drawing. Uh, you know, I like the way you've got that segmented, I don't know if that's stone or brick on the bottom. Right. So, you know, make it just blend in what you got around the lake, the segmented, like you're doing, just maybe add some more. We have very talented people on staff. We have very talented people from Dick's Lathrop. You know, put your minds together. And, and I'm, not look, I'm not looking to add hundreds of thousands of dollars to the cost, but, you know, I, a little stack here, a stack there, I changes the whole look. In. We, we go to every developer in town, and we tell them stone, brick, this, that. You know, we got to hold ourselves to the right. same things that we ask them. I mean, how many times did I ask you for more bread? Right. I think what the mayor is saying is maybe a split plate block. The nomenclature stone to me is something that's hard. That if we put stone on there, we, that's the only place in the whole park we have stone. Mm -hmm. Brick certainly, split plate block certainly, you know, some tile <laughs> certainly. But uh, I'm not sure you want to add just well, that, that area. And, that, and that's fine, Tom. The same types of things that. Less in the park already. I think you're saying less stucco and concrete, sheer concrete. Yeah. yeah. Just when, when we're talking about stone in, this, stone. in this elevation, this, this is not a stone stone, a field stone. It's, it's more of a, 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 a smooth cut sandstone look, okay. not, not necessarily a stone stone. You should get with our development services staff so you understand what we require of everybody else and just make sure that it's incorporated into what we're building for ourselves. It can't be, you know, do as we say, but not as we do. And, and, and Mayor, what I was talking before, why we added the plant material here, my personal preference is hiding stone. We're, we're going to have planting in the front, so instead of hiding it, I would rather minimize the stone on the service wings and add it to the base of the stage. So that you see, it. so it's in those really high tactile guest interactive areas. But the other areas that are going to be planted or back of house, you know, spending the money there. Yeah. Um, there, there is a ton of talent in this room. Yes, sir. Just as I said, just yep. make sure we're meeting or exceeding our own standards that we require of others. But that's all I'm asking. Yes. Anything else, guys? Are we going to talk about the colors? Are we going to address that or no? Uh, Brian? I think colors are easy, but let's find out. I'm sorry. I'll ask them. Okay. Because they gave us two different color schemes. Which one do you like, Councilwoman? I like the, green the bottom one. one. Hmm? The bottom one. All right, the bottom one. The bottom one? Yeah. Done. That's only I got think two it doors. Look good with all this brick that he brought. It's going to match the brick, so it's yeah. fine. Good. Brian? Did you need us to, to decide on I'm getting the color scheme Councilwoman was asking? Or is, I, right now, we should just finalize the design. I'd appreciate your input on the colors, <laughs> yes. Which color scheme does Dix Lathrop prefer? We actually like the top one. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and part of it is is with the brick. If you choose to do the brick, we could certainly color um, that main block of the siding with that same color versus you, you actually using brick. Could you do us a favor? Could you add those amenities that you're thinking of to the color scheme that you prefer and send it out to all of us? Uh, we will take a peek at it. Okay. 
that good, Council? That's good. The right. top one has more, has more substantial, and I think what we were all just mm -hmm. talking about was is the brick, the red to match the mm -hmm. bricks that are going to be in the roadways and the park and everything like that. So the top, if you can add some of that brick in there and make it look a little like the bottom to keep that top design, we have the best of everything. Great. Is that, is yeah. that, is that yeah. hitting right on? Right <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Great. That will look good. Yeah. Okay. The the other um, thing that I want to make sure that we cover. Um, as we advance these drawings, that again, the red arrows that you see here is the indoor-outdoor connections to the park. And uh, the other two, which are the uh, kind of orange ones in the lower side, are the two doors out of the service kitchen area, out into the service area. Um, one of the, uh, this is probably more George's uh, information, but the one of the big components of certainly the service area is the function and size of the kitchen. Uh, currently, this is designed as a prep kitchen, catering kitchen. This is not a full kitchen in uh, any way, shape, or form. Um, and, and as George said, the number of bathrooms, I think you said there were seven each, seven fixtures each. So in addition to the ones in the park, seven and six, you have 13, and then you have 12 in the park. We're good. And then if there's a big event, like Councilman Britton said, you're going to bring in portable units anyway. Right. So does that meet the uh, concern over the restroom counts? Great. It looks like I'm seeing nods everywhere. Good. And Great. catering kitchen, definitely. We Every event that we have visited lately that's been built, that's what they're going towards. Let me throw a caveat on there. That don't fixate on the kitchen. It may change. It will be a catering kitchen. But we, we haven't gone to the next step. All the functions and access and comparable. Okay. Anything else? Oh, yes. I, I just wanted to make one final comment um, concerning the elevations. Greg talked about how, you know, we're in, in designing this building. We're we're really up against two two um, uh, hard boundaries. We've got the the street here, and we've got the large uh, under drain piping right at the face of the stage. So we're, we're a little squeezed this way, and we've been able to grow the building in this direction. In, in order to maintain the height of this stage above the lawn, uh, as was originally asked, and, and to also deal with the entry into the building, that's why we have that 12-inch differential. That 12-inch differential, if it has to go away, it can probably go away. I don't recommend it. But it can be tweaked or it could be minimized to something, maybe it's 6 inches instead of 12 inches. But if you want to have a platform stage inside um, and you want to have all the other things functioning as they, as they are shown here, um, at some point in time, if you don't have the differential, you're going to compromise a little bit. So I, think, that's what uh, I, I think the agreement and the consensus was go forth. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, with everything being said, I appreciate everyone's time. Very good job as usual. Uh, we look forward to seeing now what the real costs are. Mm -hmm. no. Is that it? That's it. You can go to church now. I wanted to vote on something. We have permission to do